Welcome, everyone. We are here today with episode 2378 of the Cabral Concept, and we're going to be covering what is the dopamine diet, if you've heard about that recently, and how does it help to boost mood and focus. So you may have heard my previous podcast on dopamine and how I called it the missing neurotransmitter or chemical that your brain needs for happiness and mood. If you haven't already checked out that show, I will link it up for you today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2378. Just head on over to the show notes page for the three big takeaways from today's show, just like we do each day, but also all of the pertinent based shows that we will link up that helps to just further your knowledge and education uh, on these different health based topics. So dopamine diet has become more and more popular. And the reason is that I would say people are lacking what dopamine gives them, right? So how do you know if you need something like the dopamine diet? Well, it's a great question. Let's go over some of those symptoms you may be feeling if you are low in dopamine. All right. So people that are low in dopamine are often in a lower mood. Sometimes you might say, or they say they feel depressed, or they're just bored in life, or they're apathetic. They just kind of don't care whether they work, don't work, go on vacation, don't go on vacation. They're just kind of over it, right? Or uh, they might have lower energy waking up in the morning. So trouble waking up in general. Uh, they might have poor circulation, cold hands and feet. They might have brain fog, especially earlier in the morning. Uh, they may have difficulty completing tasks, or they feel like they're jumping always from topic to topic. They might even feel or think that they're impulsive sometimes, or other people think that they're more impulsive. They might be more prone to restless leg syndrome. Difficulty turning off and on in terms of energy and sleep at night. Might crave more sugar and carbohydrates. Sometimes even alcohol or drugs in general. Addictions can be far more... Um, prevalent with people with low dopamine. And I've talked about that now in multiple, multiple shows. Uh, for children, they may get a diagnosis of ADD or ADHD, uh, executive functioning disorder, and then just overall um, learning-based issues get attributed to this when dopamine levels are low. So sounds like most of us don't want those particular symptoms. Now, those symptoms can be attributed to a lot of other issues, and some of those are deficiencies in certain vitamins and minerals. Well, it just so happens, again, that those vitamins and minerals are what are used by the body in order to facilitate and create dopamine, right? So if we want dopamine, which is really the rewards and pleasure center of the, not just brain, but because it's an actual neurochemical that moves through the body, like uh, for you to have ambition and drive and libido and goals, you need dopamine, right? So people that are goal-oriented, they have strong libido, strong energy, very focused, those people have good levels of dopamine. You, you can run a lab if you want them. Again, like there's a neurotransmitter test that you can run right at home. It's a urine-based test. It's a great test to look for metabolites of all neurotransmitters. You just do it on a, like a typical morning, like a regular morning, not a special morning, nothing to look forward to necessarily, nothing not to look forward to. Um, I don't even know where that link is, but I know if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash labs, the neurotransmitter, the neurotransmitter mind and mood test will be there. So you can definitely find that out. You can run it with a local practitioner. You can run it with us through that link, uh, or you can run it with um, um, an IHP as well with Equal Life's help. Um, but here's the thing. Let's go into what deficiencies, nutrients you may have that actually may lead to lower dopamine, right? So that you can boost your energy, your endurance, your ambition, your goal setting, your libido, your drive, right? We can boost those things. So a lot of people say like, oh, I know I'm supposed to work out, but I just don't have any interest in it. Sure, you may not because you might be low in dopamine, right? So let's go over this. All right. So big, big causes of uh, low dopamine. One is low stomach acid. So there's so many people right now on acid blockers because of gastritis, acid reflux, um, lower esophageal-based disorders, what else, Barrett's, like you name it, right? But the answer is not to shut down acid production. I'm telling you right now, it's not the answer. Yes, temporary solutions so that you don't get more 
uh, burning and acid and inflammation in the esophagus. I get it. But why do you have the overproduction in the first place? Or why isn't the lower esophageal sphincter working that allows the acid to even make its way up in the esophagus when, in the presence of high acid, the lower esophageal sphincter, it doesn't need to be told to stay closed. It just stays closed. Okay, so then there's an issue there. There's an issue with signaling. There's an issue with vitamins, minerals. There's an issue maybe like uh, structural, like a hiatal hernia. But no matter what, there's an underlying root cause. Don't let your, um, don't let your GI doctor right? Gastro doctor tell you otherwise. Again, keep looking. I'm not telling you not to take medication, but I'm saying while you're taking the medication, please do look for the actual underlying root cause. Okay. What else could be low leading to low dopamine? Well, B6. I always talk about it. I like, I say like, this is the vitamin that gets no press, right? It gets no love. Nobody talks about vitamin B6, also known as P5P, which stands for paradoxal five phosphates, uh, paradoxin, however you want to refer to it. B6. It makes everything, all the other B vitamins work better. That's the bottom line. And it's used specifically for what? The nervous system, right? It helps with hormones like thyroid and the adrenals, and it helps with the nervous system. It helps with stress. If you are overstressed, you're going to deplete dopamine. If you then end up in a space of adrenal fatigue, right, from a functional level, or HPA axis dysfunction, if you want to talk fancy, you then can have lower levels of what? Dopamine. Why? Because your body's not going to produce as much. Why? Because you're already exhausted. So why would your body produce more of a neurochemical that makes you want to do more, have more, be more, if you don't actually have the biochemistry to get the body moving? The biochemistry would be the norepinephrine or the cortisol. You're depleted. You're depleted of B vitamins, might be depleted of vitamin C, might be depleted of a lot of things that make those adrenals really function. And same with the, um, the hypothalamus pituitary as well, right? Pedithetic acid, vitamin B5, vitamin, um, well, all your B vitamins, B9 for folate, B12. But also, like, let's not overlook, if you have low stomach acid, you're not breaking down. You're not absorbing your magnesium, which can lead to fatigue, your calcium, which can lead to fatigue. You're not absorbing your zinc, your B12. Again, so again, low stomach acid or digestive issues in general, like leaky gut, are a problem. If you have SIBO, if you have candida overgrowth, if you have H. pylori, if you have parasites, you need to fix those. Don't worry about taking, again, so what are the, some of the fixes for, well, let's talk about the fixes in just a moment, but let's not worry about like, oh, what can I add right away to give me more dopamine? Like, what, what can I add in for these biohacking products? I'm not against them, but it's surface level. It's like green medicine. It's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to fix what's going on at a fundamental level, a foundational level. So I also want you to look at heavy metals. Heavy metals can cause inflammation and deplete you of dopamine as well. A few of those, and specifically, they don't get talked about as much, cadmium, arsenic, lead. Those are big ones. If you want to test for those, run the HTMA, literally. Um, that is, I, I, I don't love, uh, here's the thing. I'm just going to, I'm going to send you to the page. You go to stephencabral.com forward slash labs, okay? You'll find the minerals and metals test right there. It will help you test for those three heavy metals, and um, yeah, head over there and you might see a little, a little pop up there too. We only have 100 a month, but we just try to get that, that lab into as many people's hands as possible. That's the bottom line. People need to start knowing their numbers. You cannot get well. You cannot lose weight. You cannot gain weight. You cannot optimize your body if you are deficient in vitamins and minerals. Like that's the bottom line. And it just makes life so much easier when your body has all the raw material it needs. Because I don't care if you are the best doctor or practitioner in the world. You don't help anybody get well. I don't help anybody get well. What I do is I put their body in a position to heal itself. That's it. I don't do the healing. Your body does. But I have to help you put your body in position to succeed. It's just like anything else, right? It's like raising kids. You're not your child. Your job is just to put them in position to succeed. Teach them what they need to know. It's their life, right? It's, it's anything, right? You have a plant. You don't make the plant grow. Now, you can give it water, right? You can give it sunlight. You can talk to it, give it carbon dioxide. But you are not making that plant grow. You're giving it the nutrients that it needs. Sunlight, carbon dioxide, and uh, some water. Right? That, that's what it needs for the most part. The soil has to be good, but that's what it needs. And your body needs the same thing. 
just a bit more complex in terms of the nutrients that we're looking at for making our organism tick. All right, so I want to share with you this. A lot of uh, biohackers, I love the biohacking industry. I just don't call myself one because I, I don't like to be put in one little box of, oh, this is th this person's a biohacker. No, I would say I'm a foundational, <laughs> I'm a, more of a bioregulatory person. I look at how the body regulates itself. I find out what it's missing, deficiencies. I find out what it has too much of, toxicities. I bring back those deficiencies, I build them back up, and I remove the toxicities. If I do that, everything gets better because it can't not, like that's what I try to impress upon people, it cannot not get better to use a double negative. It has to get better. Your body wants to heal. It wants to cheat and achieve in a state, a state of equilibrium. Your body's in flux. It's in what we call dynamic equilibrium. It's always moving. It's always trying to stay balanced. When it's missing nutrients or has too many toxicities like heavy metals, it gets out of balance. That's what we do. All right. So the, the biohacking community, they want to give you more tyrosine and they want to give you more phenylalanine. Phenylalanine, precursor to tyrosine in, in some regards. Tyrosine, a precursor to dopamine. Do they work? Yeah, they do. I've used, I've used a very simple formula. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm not giving you medical advice. I've used 1,000 milligrams of tyrosine to 100 milligrams of 5-HTP one, two, or three times a day away from food. And it works well for boosting dopamine and serotonin. They're both precursors. 5-HTP is, is 5-hydroxytryptophan. Eventually, if you have enough B6, selenium, a few other factors, it converts to serotonin. Okay, tyrosine, phenylalanine converts to dopamine. I don't believe that this is the best way to do it. Temporarily, maybe, sure, it works. But the thing is, you're not fixing all the different reasons why your body's not making it naturally. So besides the nutrients, again, you know I recommend, even if you only do one thing, like literally one thing in the world, do two scoops of the daily nutritional support powder every morning. Shake it up with water, shake it up with coconut milk, almond milk, Make a smoothie out of it with berries and fruit, whatever you want to do. Have it mid-afternoon before a workout, after workout, your choice. Get all the nutrients you need on a daily basis. That literally covers everything. You could do more. It would be better. But just doing that, that's enough. Like, honestly, um, it's 12 different nutritional supplements in one. It gives you everything that you need. So just that, literally just that. And that will give you all of your nutrients. But let's talk about, though, the absolute best foods on a dopamine diet for boosting your focus and mood. So I made a nice little bullet point here for you. And I'm going to go over high level first. And then I'm going to go over individual foods. I think you'll like I think you'll like a few of these, no doubt about it. All right. So, foods high in omega 3s. You can get it through supplementation, daily omega support or on a near daily basis, you can take in wild salmon, anchovies, sardines, mackerel, or trout, wild trout. Now, if you don't like eating those foods and you're not going to do them on a daily basis, I do recommend two soft gels of the daily omega-3 support. All of these products I recommend are at stephencabral.com forward slash shop. You don't need to purchase them there. You can purchase them from your integrative health practitioner, from your local uh, naturopathic doctor, whoever you want. But they work. But you can also, if you want, eat wild salmon every day or sardines or mackerel or anchovies or wild trout. And ideally rotate some of those, of course. But that works. It, it, it really does. The only people, again, I've run thousands of omega-3 lab tests, thousands. The only people who come back at a three to one, the ideal level, right around there, two, three, right around there to one of omega-6 to omega-3s, are those people who eat the fish that I just talked about at least four or five times a week, or they supplement. That's it. That's all I find. Like, I literally, I would tell you differently. <laughs> I would, but this is all the data we have. And it's a huge study that we're running, right? We're running our own internal study. We see all these things on a daily basis. Okay. The next one is this. Proteins. Lean proteins specifically. It's interesting because it just seems to be easier to digest for a lot of people. So, but I'll get, I'll get to healthy fats in just a minute. Uh, the top ones on the dopamine diet are lentils, chicken, the fish I just named, as well as lean beef. All right. So lean beef is typically grass-fed, grass-finished, 
and uh, and or it is um, more wild game, such as elk or buffalo or deer, like venison. Those those are a few of the others that I eat as well. Okay. Ne and again, you'll see these are vegan foods as well as primal paleo, whatever you want to call it. There's something for everybody in this. But these are on a daily basis, okay? The next one is this. Healthy fats from avocados, olives or olive oil, from fish that I just named, walnuts, okay? Walnuts are also a plant-based source of some, uh, some good omega-3s as well. All right, uh, let's go over a few more. Nuts and seeds, specifically pumpkin seeds, walnuts that I just named, chia and hemp seeds that you can put right in your smoothie if you wanted to, uh, or almonds, raw almonds specifically. Blueberries and strawberries. Um, so I'll tell you this. My Purple Crush smoothie, that's what I call it. Free recipes, by the way. You can just go right online and, and grab those. And, uh, well, if you ever can't find them, just ask at cabralsupportgroup.com. It's all free. Literally, it's all free. You can just ask at cabralsupportgroup.com anytime. But blueberries are the way to go. Wild blueberries help boost those dopamine levels. I'll keep it at that. All right, one of my favorite foods that I've already shared my love of it for many, many times, uh, apples. Apples are a great food in order to boost your quercetin levels, overall antioxidants, rutin that I've talked about before, and it stimulates dopamine production. All right, a couple random ones. Prunes. I don't know if you're into eating prunes. I'm not really a prune guy, but if you like prunes, throw one or two in your smoothie. Helps to boost those dopamine levels. Banana. I toss a half of a frozen banana in my smoothie every single day. What I do is I put like five bananas in a stasher bag in my freezer and I break them all into four. So my, my wife looks at me and she's like, that is a very Steve thing to do. I put all the bananas in and then I break each one into four inside of the bag so it's not making a mess. And then I know when it's time to take out a half a banana, how many pieces do I need? Two. So she laughs at me, but this is how I live my life. I live it very, very simply. You might think that that's complex. It's not. It's actually simple because then I'm like, I don't need to think about what a half a banana is. And if I break it in just a half, it's harder to blend a full half banana. So I break it in two. Easy, right? So that's what I do. Little, uh, little pulling back the curtain there, but very high in tyrosine. All right. Tyrosine is going to help boost that dopamine naturally. Um, two more. Uh, one of my favorites, as I always talk about, sulfur-based veggies, Brussels, uh, cauliflower, Broccoli, what else? Bok choy, those are all really, really great ones for sure. Cabbage is up there, garlic, onions, chives, really good uh, brain foods, antioxidants, and they help boost dopamine. Now, the favorite one that I saved for the last that a lot of people may enjoy is some dark chocolate. Raw dark chocolate or raw chocolate or um, cold processed dark chocolate, those are great ones. Just, again, make sure it's clean. I've talked about before, like the best types of chocolate. You want 70 plus dark. You want organic. You don't want any alcohols or liqueurs in there. Uh, you want just one type of sugar, whether it be cane or maple syrup or coconut sugar or maple sugar, whatever you like. And they might add just a little bit of sea salt or something like that. That's it. That's all you want in your chocolate. Chocolate. Essentially, three ingredients. That's it. And um, I'm telling you right now, that's a great way to boost dopamine levels as well. Now, how do you boost dopamine levels earlier in the day? Well, you can do the chocolate daily nutritional support powder or whatever. And in your smoothie, throw in a little bit of dark chocolate. Throw the dark chocolate in your morning smoothie. I'm giving you permission right now to do so. You can control how much you put in. Now you're going to get all your vitamins and minerals. Okay. And again, use any type of uh, all in one. Uh, shake that you want. It does not have to be the one that I'm talking about right now. It does not have to be, right? It just helps. That's it. You, but you can use whatever you want. Then throw in some blueberries, throw in some dark chocolate if you want, or my, what my wife actually does is she puts in some cherries, some blueberries, dark chocolate. She uses the chocolate DNS, and then um, some of those seeds that we just talked about. And that's going to be a really healthy dopamine boosting shake. So uh, hopefully today's podcast was helpful. If you are someone who's looking to overcome the symptoms that I named in the beginning of this podcast and boost your focus, your mood, your endurance, your drive, your libido, your ambition, any of those things, try adding a few more of these foods into your day and see if it helps you. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning into today's show. Please let me know how it went. And also feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. 